What can we learn from a box of teeth? Well, if we know where the teeth came from, and if we have access to advanced scientific instruments, in a decontaminated, meticulously clean lab, we can learn quite a lot. When we study teeth in my lab, we're studying more than just the teeth. We're studying the microbiomes on those teeth, if we can figure out who they belong to. Laura Wyrick is an associate professor of anthropology at Penn State and a member of the Huck Institute's Microbiome Center. A microbiome is a community of bacteria, archaea, viruses, protists, and parasites, all these microscopic organisms that live in a particular environment. And one of those environments is the human body. And so you have a microbiome that lives on and in you. In fact, more than 50% of your cells in your body are actually microbial. So it turns out you're more microbial than you are human. With the development of next-gen sequencing technology in 2005, whole new areas of research opened up for scientists, including the human microbiome. Among other exciting aspects of discovery, this rapidly emerging field holds potential to help us treat and prevent diseases and live healthier lives. We study the microbiome in the mouth because we think it's really important, not only for oral health, things like cavities and periodontal disease, but it's also really important for systemic health. So things like Alzheimer's and colon cancer and arthritis have also been linked to the types of microorganisms that live in our mouth. So if we're gonna understand how we improve human health, we need to think not just about microbes that live in our gut, but also about microbes that live on the surface of our teeth and on our tongue. In fact, microbes that live on the surface of our teeth are in direct communication with our immune system and with our bloodstream, and so it's really important to understand what those microbes are and what they're doing. To expand our understanding of our oral microbiomes, Wyrick and her colleagues have looked not only at current populations, but deep into our evolutionary past. That's actually really interesting, so you can definitely see stuff inside like the cracks, it's like calcified in there. In 2017, she published a paper detailing DNA sequences taken from Neanderthal teeth in Spee Cave in Belgium and El Cidron Cave in Spain. Wyrick's team found that despite being dead for 48,000 years, the Neanderthals from both regions were in excellent health, dentally speaking. So we looked at the calcified dental plaque, or dental calculus, on the surface of Neanderthal teeth. And we looked at Neanderthals in El Cidron, Spain, and Spee, Belgium. Spee, Belgium Neanderthals are thought to be as carnivorous as polar bears, and we actually saw evidence that they were eating quite a bit of meat, whereas El Cidron Neanderthals are probably eating a lot more plant-based foods, and they would have lived in a forested environment and probably foraged a lot of foods that would have been accessible in that area. But regardless of where they were living, regardless of what they were eating, they had excellent oral health. And in fact, I wish I had teeth as healthy as a Neanderthal. The Neanderthal studies provide a fascinating glimpse into the lives of one of our closest evolutionary cousins. And they also prompt lots of interesting questions about the oral microbiomes of modern people around the world. Working in the ancient DNA lab at Penn State, Wyrick is able to run comparison studies across both space and time. What she has found is that oral microbiomes vary massively across both scales. So today, if you go to dental school, you're taught about one type of oral microbiome. Um, and that one type of oral microbiome is what we know exists in industrialized humans predominantly. There are big variations to that when we start looking at people living in other parts of the world, in non-industrialized countries. We know people living in the Philippines or living in Africa have very different oral microbiomes to people living in industrialized countries today. That variation across geographic regions can now be measured for comparison studies, as can the changing oral microbiomes of people and our evolutionary ancestors over time. By mapping these changes to other known factors from our past, such as changes in diets brought on by the development of agriculture, scientists can begin to understand how these elements interact to impact human health. And this new knowledge may help us lead healthier lives, maybe even as healthy as Neanderthals. I think we can use the past to inform the future. And I think if we can listen to these stories from our ancestors and understand what they went through and how their health changed through time, they can really teach us about how we can develop better medical treatments and can improve our health in the future. If we can understand these stories from our ancestors, we can use that to try to improve where we're headed tomorrow. To keep up with Dr. Wyrick's research, visit microarclab.github.io.